Great grab. All right. What do you say? Should we uh, get comfortable up here? Yeah. All right. Sorry about that, Dana. It's all right. Keep me on my toes. Wake right. me right up. <laughs> that was good. All right. Uh, it's about time to put a bow on things, right? Uh, the name of this talk, whatever, is to take action. And really, we just want to talk, take some time and summarize what we've been through in the last, last couple of days and, uh, and then have some time to answer some of your questions. But, um, you know, over the last couple of days, I hope you felt and when you leave, you'll, you'll know that you're not alone in this journey. Um, if, if you don't, we missed it. And, and uh, either being in this room or in the hallway or in the exhibit halls or having breakfast, lunch or dinner, whatever, I hope uh, you've been able to start building your tribe or your posse as, as Dana had talked about on day one. Um, you know, we learned about the first approved treatment within the taxi community with Riata Pharmaceuticals the other day. But along with that, we also learned and saw what the pharmaceutical, the drug pipeline is for the next one. So just because the first, we have one, we're not done. It's just the first one. So, something had to go first. Here comes number two and number three. We've got to stay committed to this. The other thing that I just quickly want to mm -hmm. mention is that Friedrichs is a type of ataxia. So even though the drug is specifically for Friedrichs ataxia, it's still ataxia. And they're, whatever they learned in bringing that drug to market can be useful information to bring more drugs to market for ataxia in general. Exactly. You know, we had, um, today we had some real candid conversations, didn't we, uh, about you know, living with ataxia. Um, you know, Jonas and Kathleen and Darian, they, just you know, put it all out there for us. It was a, a, one of my favorite sessions just to, to hear about that. Um, we had some candid conversations about caregiving. Um, good talks. Um, and you know, it's uh, some of the other things we've got going. I mean, that, that I hope you'll be able to take advantage of is one thing is certainly our support groups. Yes, yeah, support groups are so very important. So you, most of you, have probably attended the Birds of a Feather sessions mm -hmm. here this weekend, and probably found, if, especially if you're a new timer, for the first time that you were interacting with people and the conversation was really easy because they totally understood where you were coming from and they had the same perspective on things. And so the support groups are a continuation of that. It's just an opportunity to meet on a more regular basis with people that share the same um, situations as you and I will tell you from my personal experience, I wanted to um, start a group for spouses and partners of Sorry. people without ataxia. Right. And the reason that I wanted to start that is because one didn't exist, and I really needed that. And I have to say, there's a lot of curiosity about what happens in our support group and what we talk about, because the general perception is that we're getting together to complain about our spouse or our partner. and it, there's nothing that my could wife be may want to be a part of that group. <laughs> There's nothing that could be further from the truth. The wonderful thing about that support group is that we're sharing strategies, how and you know information with one another. So and it's a really positive group, and we have a lot of laughs. And I'm so happy that I started it because I think it was necessary. And I have a gentleman that joins us every time we meet from Thailand. And it's six in the morning, his time, when he joins our meetings. And he told me he would get up at three in the morning to join the meeting. So I know that it was a necessary, a necessary support group. Exactly. And you know, there's support groups, I think uh, the number might be 60 or 65 that we have around the country now. So there is one near you. And they're active in a lot of different things. And some of it is even in, in fundraising, with, in fundraising. The, with our campaigns. Yeah, some of it is like, you know, doing walk and rolls, which is something that many of our um, ataxia friends that we've had over the years have started. And the walk and rolls are really a great opportunity to, for advocacy, but also to raise funds. And it's a lot of fun. And as Joel said the other day, it's a way to make some really great memories, some happy right. memories. It really is. You know, um, development is you know, one of the things we talked about yesterday is you know, that secret. Uh, and it's not a secret. We just have to acknowledge it and embrace it. 
With funding, we have a really good chance to get where we want to go. And without it, we just won't. Um, it's everything regards, uh, revolves around funding, right? Um, and you know, to, to get everybody involved in that aspect of the foundation is so important. And it can be a lot of fun, too, especially with some of the events we'll talk about here in a second. But you know, if, if you've given, if you've been a part of our organization in the past, um, thank you. Um, and we hope you'll continue to be, a, be with us to help us grow and, and achieve the goals that we're all looking for. If you haven't, I hope you'll start. And it doesn't have to be you know, anything big. I mean, really, a five, ten dollars a month recurring gift. You know, that can, a ten dollar gift on an annual, each month for a year, will help buy an hour's worth of research. That's impactful. You know, it's, it's a nice way to get to be a part of the team. Sometimes, somebody, you may have somebody, you just like to have us come and talk to you. Um, either in your family, um, friends, uh, business associates, we'd be happy to come and meet those folks and tell them what we have going on here at, uh, at the National Taxia Foundation. I know it can be difficult to, to ask for support, okay? But that's what we're here to do. We can do that for you. We'd love to do that for you and do it with you if you'd like. So consider us as an, a resource to, to get involved with you, to, to help, um, uh, help others get involved with us. We'd love to do that. Um, so many different ways to get involved. The, um, uh, but some of the fun ways is really with some of the fundraising you're going to hear about tonight at the banquet. Uh, we have, we've had some great stories to, uh, to, to share with you. But uh, as, as, Dana, as Dana mentioned, um, they are fun. They create a lot of memories. And if, you're, if you want to think about doing something uh, in your area to help support the foundation, I'd just say don't start with thinking with your head. Think with your heart. And what I mean by that is if, if there's something that you like to do with your friends, your family that you enjoy doing, and you want to create a, a fundraising event around that, it will be successful. It will be fun. You will create more memories. And you'll put something on the calendar to really look forward to. And we will help. You do not have to be, uh, do this on your own. That's our role here at the, at the foundation as well, is to help pull these things together, support you in the ways that you need, um, and help launch things. We're, we're here to help. And, and that's the other piece I wanted to talk about. You know, we're talking about NAF being a resource for you, right? Well, yeah, and something I want to just add to yeah. what you just said is that when I first became involved, I thought fundraising, okay, it has to be, you know, so many, so much money, and it has to be this big extravagant event. And it doesn't have to be that. No. It can be whatever you want to be. And if ever you want it to be, and even if it's you raise $50, it's $50 more than we had before. So I think that sometimes people get intimidated by the scale of it and think that it has to be this larger than life thing, and it really doesn't. It can be something really small. Spot on, spot on. Um, so we hope you'll give some thought to getting involved with us. Um, and reach out to us. You know, our website, and, and NAF, first of all, for, certainly for our first timers, um, we hope you'll look to us to be your resource on everything Ataxia, okay? Um, our website is, the word we've heard it a couple times over the last couple of days, it is robust. We do have a lot of answers there for you, uh, a lot of information. Not all the answers are there, and not all the, the, the information there uh, may pertain to your own situation. So, go beyond the website. Reach out to us, okay? Reach out to us. Use us, put us to work, okay? I mean, we may not have the answer right away, but we will find it for you. So don't ever hesitate to um, pick up the phone, um, send us an email, a text. Um, our meal ad email addresses are so simple. I mean, yeah, my, I mean really, <laughs> joel at ataxia.org, okay? Um, and if he, everybody else is just first name at ataxia.org. So um, please, please put us to work. Let us, let us help you in this journey. That's what we're here for. You know, the other thing that's helpful to know is that the website does offer translated, um, all the information is translated. Exactly. So in how many languages is it? It's quite a few. I'm not sure, I only know like one. But it's quite a few Slang languages. Slang too, that's so two, so. <laughs> that, that should be a helpful thing as well. Please reach out to us with any questions you may have. And um, before we, we go to questions, um, I just want to leave you with this. Um, it's not that we want you to get involved with us. And when I say we, 
Uh, you know, I'm talking about our research community, our, our, our principal investigators, our coordinators, our clinicians, our industry partners like Riata and Biohaven, and all those folks, um, those who live with ataxia, caregivers, that's we, okay? And it's not that we want you to get involved with us, we need you to, okay? Everybody in this room needs a person next to you to get involved. And that means, well, you're all, by registering for the conference, you're all members now, but get involved with CORDS, register so we know where you are and what your situation is. So when clinical trials come up, we know how we can contact you, okay? Um, I hope, one thing we, I hope one thing we didn't do here this, in the last couple of days in by any way come across intimidating or in any way not being willing to help you in this, okay? Um, I hope you don't leave here with that because the, the, the last, the last one we want. We want to be here to help. And by doing so, we're going to help each other to get to that, that next approved treatment, okay? So I just want to ask a question. So how many first timers do we have in the room? Excellent. Thanks. Okay, that's fabulous. So what's your energy level like right now? Be honest. Uh, tired. Tired, right? Nice. right? nice. Tired. But nice, huh? But that's nice. Right. Yeah, that's, but that's good. That's what I was talking about the first day when we were talking to you about, you know, what it's like to be a first timer and how to not over schedule yourself and run around like a chicken because you know, right? Because there's just so much to take advantage of and you really will wear yourself out. And I think that one of the biggest things is there's so much information and you're so hungry for it. I, I will speak for myself, like as a first timer, I, I just wanted to know everything there was to know. And so that's why I, you know, went to everything there was to go to but you get tired. So hopefully we can give you some time back in your afternoon where you can maybe lay down and just rest a little bit before the banquet because we do expect you to come back to the banquet wearing your dancing shoes because right. it should go. be a good time and we want to see everybody having fun. There you go. With that, do we have any questions? Do you have any questions for us to, um, before we call it? Oh yeah, there's, okay, we got a, great. Hi, I wanted to know if you would go uh, touch on the Hill Day. Um, I'm actually a lobbyist for the American Legion and for a trucking organization. So I see that it's virtual, but I want to know if you were having some people on the ground in DC in September, and uh, what if you could just talk a little bit more about Hill Day. Great question. Dana, I'll let you take that one. You will. <laughs> Hill Day is an awesome opportunity to get involved and to go to Washington and talk to your congressman about ataxia. It's a wonderful way to educate them about ataxia and to get them involved in you know, being part of the solution for us and Absolutely. helping us to pass bills and laws and stuff like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have a, I'm sorry, do you have staff that particularly work on advocacy or work on developing relationships <laughs> with? Uh... You're standing right next to her right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, How's that? Love to talk to you. There Love you to have How's you participate in Hill Day. And it is going to be virtual, so anybody that wants to participate, uh, when registration opens, um, we'll send that out in our newsletters. And yeah, we'd love to have you have that opportunity to connect with your representatives about some important issues that impact the ataxia community. That, that was good timing and not choreographed. <laughs> oh, sure. Um, well, during our Hill Days, we can have over 100 meetings with congressional offices. Excellent. Any other questions? They want to go Well, they you they know what, then? Down. <laughs> Let's officially put a wrap on this. Thank you all so much for being with us over the last couple of days. Hope Thank you have you. a great time tonight, okay? And reach Thanks, out everyone. at any time with anything. Go rest. Mm-hmm. <laughs>